So let me set the stage for you. It's the 1980 World Series. The players for the Royals, they had guys like Amos Otis, Hal McRae, and the Hall of Fame great George Brett. For the Phillies, they had guys like Bob Boone, Larry Boa, the hit king, Pete Rose. And they had two Hall of Famers. They had Steve Carlton, who went on to win two games that series, and Mike Schmidt, who went on to become the MVP of that series. The Phillies were up two games to one going into the fourth game. And the Royals were up five to one in the fourth inning with the momentum swinging their way. So Dickie Knowles was on the mound. And a couple innings before, he had threw a home run pitch to Willie Mays Aiken, who hit it over the center field wall and kind of pimped it, which was a no-no back then. Yeah, coincidentally, Willie Mays Aiken became the first player to have multiple home run games in a World Series. But Dickie Knowles told himself that when Aikens came back up in the fourth, that he was going to hit him. Unfortunately for George Brett, he was standing in Dickie Knowles' way. And Dickie Knowles decided, you know what? I'm going to hit Brett instead. And here's the pitch that changed the momentum of this series and swung it back to the Phillies' way. Two strikes on Brett. Down he goes. There's a message right there. Here comes Jim Fry out. There's a message. Jim Fry is out right now. He is really upset. He is really upset. Two strikes, no balls, and he really low bridged him. Fry wants to go after him. Don Dinkinger, the home plate umpire. He wants a warning issue to the pitcher, and we're going to ask Ronnie Luciano, who's in the booth. Brett is the calmest guy here. Now Rose is challenging Fry. The other umpires have come in. Gordy McKenzie from third has come in to calm Jimmy down. He wants no one, Jimmy Fry, messing with the man you call the franchise last night, George Brett. So they have stirred up Jimmy Fry. Pete Rose also. Brett very calmly just hanging around, but he really got flipped. We're going to show you the pitch. Ronnie, I want you to talk about this after he gets flipped. What an umpire has to do in this situation. Watch George go down. Two pitches down, low and away, and then he comes high and tight. Quick reaction by George. And this is the only time an umpire has time to think. Here it is. He's looking at the pitch. He sees he comes high in on George, and he's seeing to himself, listen, I've got to warn him. What am I going to say? I've got to pick up my words perfectly. And at the same time, while he's watching this, he looks out of the side and he sees Fry starting coming out of the dugout. So he waits until Fry comes out there and he gives him a little extra time to go out and say it. He's, he was going to go out to the mound and talk to him and he's going to tell him, listen, to come close again, you're gone. Not only you, but I'm going over to Dallas Green and Dallas is going too. And by the same token, if Dennis Leonard throws at anybody, Dennis Leonard is going to be gone and Fry, you're going to be gone too. So unfair rule, more. unfair rule. The first right. guy could take a shot, and the next guy who might let a ball slip, he's thrown out. Why? They, they don't want anyone hurt. The heck with the shots. I get one shot, you get one. None of this even up stuff. We don't want anybody hurt, and he's going to stop both sides. Okay, guys, settle down. <laughs> Curveball inside. Ask about it. Strike is called. He'll hear a boo. There is Dallas Green. He was warned by Benkinger. So... The message is clear. Here comes Jim Fry, Kansas City manager, out of the dugout, and he is hot. He talks first to Don Dekinger, and now is looking out at Dickie Knowles. Pete Rose coming in from first base, now trying to get between Fry and Dickie Knowles. You know, Dickie, he don't give a damn about anything, especially when he's playing the game of baseball. I don't even think Dickie knew he was in a World Series. I mean, he looked at me like, are you crazy? What's this guy yelling at? I said, Dickie, he thinks you were yeah, throwing at him. He says, I was. But that pitch, that, that, that pitch, yeah, I, I, uh, it was a very interesting pitch because there was a lot that came with that pitch. Um, first of all, I was in the bullpen earlier that day. We're in Kansas City, and the Goodyear blimp's flying out there. And me and myself uh, and Kevin Sauche hadn't pitched yet. And they had wore out. So now we're in the World Series. We, we got the pitch, and I'm looking at the manager like, what the heck? This is our dream. 
Kevin Saucier and myself both are in the bullpen saying, man, we're not going to get to pitch in this World Series. And, and, and uh, that day, Larry Christensen got knocked out in the first inning. And we're warming up. And, and of course, they called down and said, are you guys ready? And I'd thrown about five pitches. And Sauce had thrown about four or five. And Sauce's remarks were, no way. And I said, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the bullpen coach looked at me. And I said, I'm ready. I swear I'm ready. And they put me in the game. And I went in with a bases loaded and went 3-0 and oh, right off the bat. Ball one, ball two, ball three. Threw a strike, and then Willie Wilson swung it up, would, would have been ball four and grounded out. So I said, I got my World Series appearance. And then I pitched the next inning. And if you go back in that time, Willie Mays Aikens hit a home run, which was his third home run in the World Series, in the first inning. Now in the second inning, I'm facing him. He hits another home run off me. But when he hit it, now I will tell you this, it was one of the longest home runs probably hit in World Series because it almost left the stadium. And everybody knew it was hit so far. And as a pitcher, I kind of was different as a pitcher. A lot of pitchers don't like to look at them. I love to look at them, especially when they hit them a long way because I always wanted to be a hitter. So I turned around, I'm watching it, and I'm wow, that's so cool. And I'm watching it hit about two feet from the top off the bullpen and bounce back. And I said, almost, I, I kind of wish it went out of state. But when I turned around, he was still at home plate watching it too. It's a different game then. You didn't do that other than Reggie Jackson. So I, I walked to home plate and I said, Willie, if you don't run, you need to run. Let's go. <laughs> Willie's still looking and he kind of gave it a little walk. And I said, dude, if you don't run, I'm going to hit you right in your head. Now that was the way we talked to each other. And I watched him run around the bases and I noticed our team was upset. So I went back to the dugout and I sat down and Marty Bystrom, who was here, who always, we call him Hard Marty. If you don't know Marty, he's, he's, he's a piece of work. And he's sitting there going. He gets up to go to get a drink of water. He goes, when are you going to knock somebody down? I'm in my second inning. I just, you know, I want to be around for a while. I want to remember this and say, hey, to my grandkids and my kids, I'm pitching the World Series. So he kind of walks by and goes, when are you going to knock somebody down? Let's go. And I said, shut up. And then Tug McGraw kind of sat down beside me and, and said, hey, somebody, I, I, I got you. I know what you're talking about. I'll, I'm going to hit Willie Mays Aikens. So the next inning comes and I start pitching pretty good, struck out a couple guys, and the next inning comes and I'm starting to dominate a little bit. I, that hit somebody's kind of left my mind. Didn't want to do it because realistically it's not easy to do, especially when you want to stay in the game. So Brett comes up and George was King George that year. He hit 390, he hit 400 most of the year, and boy could he hit. Brett came up and I threw a fastball right by him. He had no chance. and He could kill a fastball. He just took Gossage's fastball in the upper deck. I threw another one right by him, and he started looking at his bat like, what's wrong with my bat? <laughs> like, this guy's, you know, who is this guy? And so I kind of got mad, so I told Brett, I had no intentions of getting Brett. I said, hey, if you don't get in the box, I'm going to hit you. Now, we could talk like that. These guys couldn't in their area. The umpire would eject them. We could do it, and I hollered at him. Hey, if you don't get in the box, I'm going to hit you. Let's go. Because I'm thinking, Willie Mays Aiken's up next. i got to get Brett out. I'm drilling him. Well, Brett took forever to get in the box. And I started to wind up, and I said, I'm letting it fly. Either he's going to die or get hit or get out of the way. And I thank God to this day the ball didn't hit him because I was throwing about 95, 96 from what I heard in that game. And that pitch to him was only 90. So if that would have been a normal fastball, I think it would have killed him because if you look at it real slow, it's right there, and he flips. Yeah. And you know what was interesting was after and, – and a lot of people say the pitch changed the World Series. I would have never believed that. I didn't even think the pitch did anything. But – I was at a golf tournament in Williamsport this year, and Amos Otis is on the other side of the field, and he hollers at me, and I can't tell you what he said. And I was going, man, what did I ever do to that guy? I don't think I ever drilled him. And he came all the way across. We got this little league, uh, all these players from all over, Hall of Famers and Ferguson Jenkins and Gaylord Curry. And he walks all the way across. I've not talked to him since 1980. And he goes, you stole my World Series ring. That's the third Kansas City players told me that that pitch made it. But I believe what happened and what made that pitch uh, powerful wasn't me knocking him down alone. It was Jim Fry overreacting, oh, running out on the field, and it was Pete Rose. He came in, and Rose come, and, and no, I mean everybody else kind of looked, and I think they were all like, "Okay, that's National League baseball. What's the big deal?" Rose came running in, and Fry's out there. You better stop it right now. Go get him. And I'm sitting on the mound thinking Brett's not looking. Brett did look at me kind of funny. I mean, he spun all the way around, and kind of like his feet were backwards, his head's looking at me. So he. Rose comes out and says, 
get off the field. And Fry goes, shut up. You know, and he says, go get him right now. And he, Rose goes, get off the field. He wasn't throwing at him. And Fry goes, how am I blank do you know? He goes, he goes he's throwing at him and he hit him. And Fry couldn't say anything after. They kind of looked at Rose. And then Rose looked at their dugout. Now, this is something I remember just like yesterday. Their whole dugout was on the top step looking at me, saying some unpleasant things, saying they were going to hit me in the head. I go, I don't hit. It's DH in the World Series. <laughs> grabbing, grabbing their neck, saying, you know, all this stuff. And Rose looked over at them and said, just pitch your own ball game. If you want to hit any of those, just hit, you know, go right ahead. Hit some more, in other words. And they all sit down. And they shut up. But I think the, the, the way Rose reacted to the pitch and backed me, and I think the way he went in and started talking to Fry, I think that made it a little bit more powerful. So the Royals ended up winning game four of that series to tie it two games apiece. But the momentum had already shifted the Phillies' way. And they ended up taking the series a couple games later in one of the greatest, most watched televised games in World Series history. So stay tuned for what I'm calling part two of this to see Tug McGraw. That's right, Tug, Tim McGraw's dad, throw the final pitch in that World Series. It's, it's pretty entertaining. To listen to him talk about the events leading up to that final game and his interaction with the great Mike Schmidt. So that's all I got. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. Until next time, peace. Bye.